Oak Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And once again, it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Dynamic Effort Lower Day. And a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos every day, please click like down below. Some minor adjustments going on using some of my new bands. You guys kind of saw that I have a ton of mini bands now. Literally a ton of them. Two pairs of 50s, two pairs of 30s, a pair of 15s, in addition to my thicker bands. So I'm going to use more of these because they let me really fine tune stuff. Uh, they're much easier to put on, especially on a bar that's already racked. Uh, it makes life easier. So this is the last week of the wave with the safety bar, and I'm going to go back to rotating my Buffalo and my Camber bar. This is a learning experience. It made me realize kind of what I need with my training to get my squat caught up. And realistically, everything I'm doing for the squat, I, I can keep rolling with it and focus more on my deadlift and bench. And some of that means I just need to incorporate more high bar type good mornings for high reps with straight legs. So I'm gonna be adjusting all my accessory work. I don't wanna do more than about four big lifts, barring any really small stuff I do uh, in each training session outside of my max and speed work. Okay, it's not counting extra grip work and, and all that. And obviously I do single joint stuff and abs and all that stuff all in between with mini workouts. People have to remember that. My triceps are getting an enormous amount of band work. So I've been really looking at, again, where's my bread and butter? So I noticed my shoulder got slightly irritated from those Z presses yesterday. Trying to force that lockout into that position. Uh, my joints don't like that. So... I'm going to be focusing on what's just going to bring my bench up. And I'm going to use stuff like the snatch grip high pulls to, to build my delts and shoulder girdle and all that. I think that's the way to go. Sides, they give me a lot of transfer to other stuff. Now, these were hard today. I did six sets of both things of the speed work. These were hard. They felt super slow. I'm watching them, and they're not super fast, but they're a lot faster than they felt. Uh, but again, this is the final week in the wave, and I actually am over-calculating. I feel like I should have got the max that I missed with this. So I'm actually calculating off of missed max as if it was my max. Probably one reason these are a little bit aggressive. The other thing, I dropped the box an inch lower. I'm going to continue to max on a 13 inch box. I'm going to do my speed work on a 12 inch box. Mainly because I felt so much more hip. Okay, if I need more hip for things like the sumo deadlifts, this will do it. If I need more hip for my squatting, well, we can build that extra hip flexor strength off the box squats. I just need to go an inch deeper, which I will. We'll run it here. If I have to, I'll, I'll go down to 11. I've done that in the past. It's speed work. It's not a big deal. Maxes are different. We can get away with that on maxes in the transference and just move the heavy weight, which I've discussed in the past. Speed work, we are getting a degree of development. And so that's what I'm going to do moving forward. We're going to run off deep boxes. Hey, this thing gave me a tremendous headache today, by the way. The bands against the safety bar. And I've realized it just it makes my head hurt, even with the neck work and everything. And I have to factor in, yes, I can max on this every now and then, as long as I build the upper back up more. I don't need to use this bar to build that area. It let me understand how weak the area is. Okay, let me understand how weak the area is. So I need to dedicate some work to every week to building that. And I can do that with other good morning variations, okay, which I'm going to do, which we'll do. But it doesn't need to be this enormous priority because I'm doing all this other upper back work. I'm doing tons of good mornings and I'm doing the tons, adding more row volume to in the snatch grip high pulls. I'm getting a lot of upper back. We just need to make sure that T-spine gets a little bit extra love. Okay. Mainly because it can limit my squat. But by that same token, if I just get strong enough on good mornings in general. And I build my lower body strong enough. I can power through a squat. I can power through it. It's got to get stronger. And these made me lightheaded. I almost passed out doing the speed pulls today. And it's because I get such a headache from the safety bar. That I got lightheaded. I almost passed out after the first two reps. I had to collect myself and did the other four. And again, heaviest week of the wave. It's a lot of band tension. A lot of people look at that and go, it's just only like 100 pounds. No, it's 100 pounds if you do them the easy way over. I have those pulled completely over the top. And when I've measured them, it's about a 56% increase. Pull the deadlift height. 
so if I were to run off the math off my digital scales, this is approximately, we'll call it 155. About 155 a band. And keep in mind, you hit those bands way before the lockout. So sumos didn't feel great today because of the hips, because I felt like my hips got really beat up with that deeper squat. I haven't been doing that. With the bar, I suck out aggressive band tension. So my hips were a little beat up. Still, I'm happy with the speed on these. They just didn't feel good. If that makes sense. I knew they were fairly fast, unlike the, the box squats, which felt slow. I just felt like my hips were beat up. Hips were really beat up. Um, but a lot of stuff we're doing, we're, we're again going to specialize in the weak points. And I think you guys will see what, I, what I'm going to do the same sort of concept I'm doing now. We're going to see it on the bench days. And I know how I want to specialize with my bench on this. If you guys are hearing that, that ticking, that's my uninterrupted power supply kicking over the battery over and over. People who are curious of, hey, why is your lighting not good? Well, there's a lot of electrical issues in my area for over a week now. And if I didn't have an uninterrupted power supply, I wouldn't even have internet. I have to run my modem off of it. So what you're hearing ticking every time you hear that tick in the background, my internet would die. My modem's running off that. So, and when I'm trying to Skype with that many clients, because again, I've got over 20 clients at this point. My God, I've got to keep that working. Otherwise, I've got to run over to my phone and, you know, use my phone to deal with them rather than my computer. I'd rather do it at my desk. Uh, but, grip. This lets me test my grip a lot. People are like, what is this, a rack pull? Yes, it is, but it's for grip training. What did I tell you guys years ago with the above the knee rack pull? The only use is a grip training tool. Has no use outside of that. Here we're testing grip, okay? Now I'm gonna do five singles, basically, of just gripping and holding for time. And I got to go on that I couldn't hold. And it was actually 425. I couldn't hold four, I'm oh, sorry, 405, right? I couldn't hold 405. For a double overhand we got to work on that we need to get up to that and then higher and what I've decided I've been doing all this other grip work and I'm like what do we really need to focus on and I need to clean this bar I have stuff coming that should be here this weekend to clean the bar it's making it harder to grip because it, it's full of chalk and liquid grip in the knurling on this bar I need to scrub it all out with three in one oil and nylon brushes, I need to clean it, which I will do, which will help with the grip on this bar, because it's going to be a while before I have a deadlift bar. They're not, uh, again, everything is ultra, ultra back ordered. I bought a deadlift bar, I won't have it. I won't have it this next month either. Okay? We just accept that. So, double overhand grip work. This is what I'm going to do. I don't need any other goofy bars. I need to quit worrying about axle bars, I need to quit worrying about COC grippers. I need to do pinch work with my little small block for weights I can only hold for about 10 seconds and I need to focus on barbell, barbell, barbell. Why? Because I don't care that much about universal all around gripping strength. I've got to just get my deadlift grip strength up. All right, we need to be able to crush a bar. All right, double overhand is going to give me what I need. So I'm going to do every lower body day we're going to do a number of holds like this and people say why don't you do this why don't you do that because I don't want to worry about training stimulus of other movements anymore I don't want my other movements to suffer because I'm trying to work on grip so I don't care about finding the the harder grip versions of anything and trying to do double overhand deadlifts or anything right now I don't want to worry about the recovery end. I can just do this this is extremely specific to my weakness which is grip on the deadlift so first goal, we need to be able to hold 405. We need to be able to hold 405 double overhand. That's ridiculous, because I used to be better than that. Remember, I've done 425 double overhand before. So 405 needs to be a goal. And then it needs to get up to probably 500. The first rep on these always looks ugly. So what I'm going to start doing is dividing up the good mornings a little bit into two styles. And we're going to work this on Fridays. Why work this on Fridays? Because I'm doing two max effort lifts and another really, really heavy movement for volume might be an issue like this. Something that gets as heavy as this, okay? I can do good mornings and, and, and rep out even 400 pounds and it's not the same as this. 
So I'm going to focus on Fridays on doing five sets of 10. So all my supplemental work is going to go to five sets and I'm going to limit the number of exercises. And I can rotate lifts. They're not going to be identical lifts through the week. We need the variation. All right, I'm going to push these hard. I got 515 today for five by 10. My previous was 505 was best before. I need to get this to 550 plus for five sets of 10. Then I know my glutes will be strong enough to deadlift what I need to deadlift. Now people say, Jason, you can probably deadlift your goal now as soon as the grip is good or as soon as you have a deadlift bar. Yeah. Yeah, I have no doubt about that. But in the meantime, we keep pushing. We keep pushing. So goal. 550 plus for 5 by 10. All right, how about good mornings? I need to get to 405 for sets of 10 with some type of barbell on a good morning. That's going to be my power day. So I'm going to start doing on max effort day, we're going to start doing heavy good mornings. I'm going to do the power style, which is with bent knees. We're going to do call it a bent leg good morning. Okay. Dynamic effort day, I'm going to push progression hard on this for five sets. And the other, I'm going to do five by ten also. Totally separate movements that are still posterior chain. So that we get some variation. And I may rotate through the different bars there. Then we're breaking it up. And it'll carry over. It's not like because I only do this lift once a week, we don't, we don't get any stimulus. We're training all these muscles. Every muscle involved in this lift is getting trained both days. Okay. That way I'll just focus on progressing hard on it, get to that goal. The other day we'll do what? Bent leg good mornings or power type good mornings. So in order to facilitate the upper back is the same thing. My upper back needs the extra love as far as the T-spine goes. It's getting some training through all this other stuff. I need it to be specific to squatting right now. So I can come in and do this on Fridays also. Five sets though, and that's the beauty of it. So we're doing stiff leg good mornings, deep range of motion. We're now starting with sets of 20, doing sets of 20. And it's set high bar, and that's the difference. I'm putting it into a high bar position. Okay, That way the T-spine is working very, very hard, and we're hitting it with a lot of volume. And I'll try to get stronger and stronger and stronger at these. If this bar lets me, me do it in a high bar position, keeping my shoulders healthy while holding it for a long time, because this is five long high rep sets, it's going to be easier to recover from. So let me come in and just hit that T-spine really hard at the end of the week, because I need that area to come up. And we could argue all the other upper back work is contributing to the upper back strength for the squat. Heavy focus on rowing. Rowing is going to be an ultra high priority, because it will bring up all three of my big lifts. Snatch grip high pulls. That stuff's going to build my upper back. I need something specific to the T-spine, and I think this fits the bill. Now, interestingly enough, I feel a lot of hamstring on this with the bent or the straight knee. So it's putting a deeper stretch on the hamstring, but it's not hitting as much hip. It's not hitting the glutes and the hips and everything else as hard as that other bent knee does. So I have a feeling this is going to carry over better again to deadlift strength, which is what I've noticed in the past. The bent knee one really helps with my squatting. But this one helps with the squatting too. Why? Because we're hitting that upper back more. But the other ones are still helping with that too. I mean, again, let's come over to the point. If I can do five sets of 10 with 405 on any type of good morning, that is also still contributing to T-spine. This is just a little more specific, hitting it directly. So we'll alternate these. One of them will be treated as a little more as a primary movement because it'll be done as my first big supplemental lift after maxes. But after speed work, we'll do this one after the glute bridges. Because again, we've already hit the posterior chain ultra hard. This is just giving it some good rep work and putting that extra focus on that back. And I felt it. The difference is I felt this without feeling my neck and head hurting. That matters. Matters a lot. Uh, because again, I don't want that annoyance. I think for now I'm going to alternate the other two bars on the on the speed squats. We're going to focus on getting deeper, that deeper box. And that'll increase my sumo stuff. It'll increase my hip strength. 
hey, that's what we got to do. But there's going to be a lot of footage of these because it's five by five sets of twenty. So I'm gonna have to ramble about them for a bit. Okay, have to ramble about them for a bit. But we're gonna see me focus on what we know works, and that's in this case, as far as my lower body lifts. What's that gonna be? A lot of good mornings. Two different two different types of good mornings will be done every week on the different days. Glute bridges be done once a week. I will also, on the other day, because I'm not doing the glute bridges, I'm going to focus on heavy good mornings. I'll work my glute ham raises in on that day. Again, my hamstrings are stupidly strong. I don't have to do the glute ham raise every lower workout. I can focus on balancing the stuff that I need. And if I'm doing a set of three sets of stuff, five sets of everything, we're getting a ton of volume. So I'll be able to hit Five sets of three different exercises that hits the posterior chain on both these days. Keeping in mind, I will be doing a squat and deadlift both on the max and the speed work. So that's that's a lot of other volume. So three sets of these and then five sets of rows. We'll discuss the rowing in a minute. So the same thing with uh, the upper body days. And I'm actually toying with messing with some strict curls. But again, up against the, the beam strict curls. Same thing, it's going to be, I'm going to put a heavy focus. I don't, I don't need to worry about overhead pressing. I can build my shoulders with those high pulls. And my other just bent close grip pressing and stuff. So we're going to focus on the close grip press. I'm going to run variations of it, depending upon where I'm weakest on my max work for any we have in week. I'll fine tune it based around my specific needs week to week to week. As far as which variations I will hammer, which bar I'll use, how much focus we put on the, the bottom, we're getting deeper than normal. Okay. And the speed benching helps too. The speed benching contributes to the benching alone. But it's gotta be close grip, close grip, close grip. JM presses, right? Those are gonna be my bread and butter in addition to my max and my speed work. We're gonna do snatch grip high pulls and we're gonna do pin light ropes, strict ropes on those days. And five sets of every one of those movements. So that's 20 work sets in addition to our standard MEDE templates. And then whatever curls or whatever I do. Now, people who say, what's well, a lot of tricep dominant? Well, that's hardly the, that's barely what's going on because look at the amount of tricep work I do in between. Um, I do over 20 sets of band press downs every week. That's going to be the other part of it. So I need to build all my pressing muscles to build up close grip pressing, hammer my triceps, and we'll worry about my wide grip if as it comes along. But I feel like I can build pec off of close grip work, particularly when I have access to buffalo bars, McDonald bar, all that stuff. All right, we can get deep range of motion. I can even use different bars for the speed work. Sorry, guys, I've yawned several times. And the same thing here. We're going to focus on what we know we need. Now, again, grip is going to be a high priority. One reason I'm going back to normal pen lay rows, five sets. And another reason to use bands and chains. They force you to use a heavier weight at the top, the grip element. Grip, 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 grip. But it's all got to be grip against the barbell. We don't care about gripping other things right now. And keep in mind, there's always transfer of some with everything. But I feel like messing with other gripping, all this done is beat up my hands, had recovery issues in my hands. I don't feel that my grip is coming along as quick as it should. Those holds will. Heavy double overhand rack pulls for grip. That'll help. All this rowing will help. Then do some pinch block work on top of it. And I think looking at how I respond to different stuff, looking at the specificity, I think that's what's going to bring my grip up to where I need it. And like I said, this is only with these other bars. With a deadlift bar, it could be totally different. But people will notice rows have bands today. Okay, We're doing bands. And it's about 70 pounds of bands approximately in this position. That's a lot to pull against at the top. So again, the trap involvement is tremendous. The traps are fighting up against the top and then they're getting an overspeed eccentric on it because it's jerking back down. In addition to the grip element of that too. Rows. Rows, rows, rows. It'll handle grip. It'll build my back. Build all of my back, top to bottom. And then we put the extra emphasis on the upper back more 
with the snatch grip high pulls. Then I'll alternate these around. I'm going to rotate through bands and chains. I'll, I'll go back to straight weight sometimes. I might mess with some of my other bars. Okay. But this was tough on grip training too. And it is challenging as far as the movement goes. The grip wasn't the limiting factor like it can be with the axle bar. So we're getting less stimulus there. But the grip was definitely worked. And that's, that's the point. Grip is being worked. And then we avoid acclimating by rotating bands and chains. And it, that works really, really well on a speed-oriented exercise like the strict row or the pin lay row, which is really we should just call this the row. And I agree with that philosophy of not even calling it a pin lay row. It's just called the row, just like the, the overhead press, standing overhead press. It really is just called the press. This should just be called the row. This is the standard default row. Okay, very strict off the floor. And I'm having to reset on these because, again, getting it to explode and hit against those bands without cheating. Very challenging. Very, very difficult. But it felt good. So, again, I used to do this. If you guys recall, way back in the day on, on Ice Cream Fitness, when I used to blog my original conjugate stuff, remember I used to do pin lay rows against bands? Okay, I used to do this a long, long, long time ago. But I mean, we're talking about seven years. I had a jacked bag back then. So this will end up being uh, 20 sets of, of rows every week. Okay, I should handle my back. That'll help with grip a lot in addition to all those holds. So again, the barbell holds. We can call them rack lock, double overhand rack lock outs, rack pulls, whatever. All the rack pulls but it's for grip training and then we finished up with our reverse hypers these felt too easy today because i didn't destroy myself with the glute ham raises and other stuff all back to back this felt too easy right the 10 was was really easy i left a lot of reps in reserve i'm like let me throw another 25 on there so i went from my 315 to 340 uh and i was able to maintain it strict able to maintain it strictly and put another 25 on. So it ended up being 340. And I ended up doing like 12 on the last set. It ended up doing like 12 on the last set. But again, you guys know why we do reverse hypers. We discuss it all the time. They're not an optional exercise. This movement and triceps are probably my, my premier movements. These are the exercises I do the most of because I do them on all my off days and things. Okay, My active recovery, restoration, GPP, whatever terms we want to use for those days which is the other three days a week that's not filmed. I do tons of high reps of these. I do tons of band press downs now. Obviously there's ab work and plyos and sled dragging. And then the sled drags are a big part of my training. Big part of my training at this point. Uh, but so again, at this at this point, honestly, probably my, my erectors and my lower back and my uh, triceps probably get the most love. They're ultra high priorities. But I'm tired of talking. You guys can watch the last couple sets. Uh, it was a good workout. Again, implementing some minor adjustments in the programming. Happy with everything today, so I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.